And I hear the Lord say, yes! I heard him say, go for it! Stephen Furtick, unqualified. Qualified. <laughs> Hello. If you are new here, make sure to put Jesus Christ first. We are back with another video. Comment below what you think about this video. Today's Bible verse here on the screen, okay? Today's Bible verse is going to be here on the screen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Comment below what you think about this Bible verse, okay? Read that. Meditate on it. Think about it. But I think there is, in the New Testament, a clear uh, reservation of that. Not just to one who teaches falsely, but who is uncorrectable. Who resists correction. I mean, Apollos was a false teacher. But when he was corrected, when he was taught how to preach a better way, how to be more faithful to Scripture, he was corrected. So there's a difference between a false teaching because just about any preacher starting out, especially he's going to teach something that's false. That's quite different than being, I think, a false teacher, uncorrected and uncorrectable. That's facts right there. Because sometimes you do things, you say things that you don't even know that you're saying it wrong. But with time, you can look back and be like, yo, that was wrong. I was saying it so wrong. It's like, for example, when you're praying, right? When you're praying, at the beginning, you the way you pray is just not, you know, you get you get better as you go. You get better and better and better and better. But when you get to a certain point in, 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 in your journey and you look back, you're like, yo, that was, I was bad praying like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not that good, but I'm definitely better than what I used to be. You get what I mean? So when you look back, you see that you're like, hmm, that was bad. And, um, the chief it's characteristic of his teaching is falsehood. We all err, make a like Calvin said, no one theologian is ever more than 80% right. And the problem was we don't know what which that 20% is. Of, uh, and then some of us, it's 50% or 60%. <laughs> the power of God was in Jesus. The healing power of God. The restoring power of God. The same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth, but Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do. One thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. I see y'all looking at me like, is that true? Thought he could do anything. He said he could not. He wanted to. He was prepared to. He was able to. And he couldn't. Yeah, but it's not like he... What? The, what? The, <laughs> it's not like he's saying... The way he's putting this is like, Jesus is incapable of doing certain things. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He's putting it wrong. It's not how. He, it simply means Jesus is giving us a choice. Like he always does. He's always giving, up, giving us options. In other hand, the devil does not give you options. The devil just comes and take it. If he can take it, he will take it. You get what I mean? But Jesus gives you options. Like he's he like behold, I stand at the door, I knock. Like he literally knocks. But the devil does not. He comes like like a thief. Like he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So God got options. But just because he couldn't do that does not mean that he cannot do it. It's simply because he is giving you options. The power of God was in Nazareth, but it was trapped in their perspective. I want Elevation Church to be a church for the overlooked, for the unloved. Not for us to have as many different varieties of Bible studies. We got Beth Moore and Kay Arthur and Joyce Meyer. No. You know what we got? We got Jesus. We preach him. We preach so that people can come to faith in Christ and we want them to get in a small group and serve so that other people can meet Christ. If you know Jesus, 
I am sorry to break it to you. This church is not for you. Yeah, but I just gave my life to Christ last week at Elevation. Last week was the last week that Elevation Church existed for you. You're in the army now. We do one thing. We preach Jesus so people far from God can know Jesus. And then we train them up so that others can know Jesus. It's called kingdom multiplication. It's what Elevation Church is all about. And over 500 people have given their lives to Jesus for the first time in this church in the last five months. That's over 100 per month. If that doesn't get you excited and you need the doctrines of grace as defined by John Calvin to excite you, you in the wrong church. Let me get a phone book. There are 720 churches in Charlotte. I'm sure we can find one where you can stuff your face until you're so obese spiritually that you can't even move. This is a church that wants to get you on the field, playing the game, changing lives, looking for an opportunity to impact. It's what we're all about. We're focused like a laser. We're not perfect, but we know what we came to do. Luke 19.10, seek and save that which is lost. It's the mission of Jesus. It's the mission of Elevation Church. And may we never become a church of front row spectators who judge the deeds being done more than we care about the people that Jesus wants to save. Let me just give you a little principle to kind of work with. Superficial understanding of scripture produces superficial worship. Shallowness produces superficial worship. And that's what we have. I've been reading a book called The Juvenilization of the Church. An interesting book, The Juvenilization of the Church. Or The Juvenilization of Christianity, actually is the title. Juvenilization of Christianity. You're living in a time when junior church has taken over. I grew up uh, in an era when uh, we had what was called junior church. When we were in the fourth grade and fifth grade, we went to junior church. Well, we now have junior church in the auditorium. That's right. It's, it's designed for elementary kids or junior hires. You know, the preacher gets his clothes from Abercrombie and Fitch, tries to look as much like a teeny bopper rock star as he can. Get my toy. Get my toy. You know, I like to illustrate stuff. It's because I love you. Gaston, aren't you glad you're watching on video? It'd be all right. It ain't sulfuric acid, it's just water. Now, this is called the Drenchinator. You see it? The Drenchinator. And the Drenchinator operates by... <laughs> I'm praying about whether to follow through. That's why the people go to this church for entertainment. For entertainment. Same thing like Michael Todd. Same thing like Michael Todd, man. What is all this? Is this supposed to be a church? What, bro? You don't need nothing else, man. You don't need nothing else but this, man. Are you a pastor? You a preacher? You don't need nothing else but this. You need this. You need to be. You don't need to bring. Guns in, in, in church and, and waters and, and, and ice and bunch of nonsense, dude. On this illustration, and I hear the Lord say, Yes! I heard him say, Go for it! Love. You heard him saying, Go for it? You heard him saying, Yes? Man. <laughs> I. Will take you way further than the law ever could. I'll prove it to you. Let's say your child is in a horrible accident. Let's say they bust their head wide open on the monkey bars. And they fall off the monkey bars, and monkey bars are like 30 feet high. I'm making this an extreme example. 
and they fall down and they bust their head wide open and you scoop them up and put them in the car to get them to the emergency room. And on the way to the emergency room, every sign you see says, uh, speed limit. How much attention do you pay to the numbers beneath the speed limit in that moment? Those numbers mean nothing to you. Why? Because somebody that you love is in trouble. And in that moment, any parent will break the law for the sake of love. Any human parent will break the law for the sake of love. And what will really turn your heart to God is not when you hear his laws, which were given for our good, by the way, but they were powerless because there wasn't enough leverage in our action to keep the law. So what God did when he sent his son, and this is why we get excited in church, and this is why tears fill our eyes when we think about Jesus, and this is why the gospel is still good news in the world today, because God broke the law for love. I said to every sinner, God broke the law for love. I mean that he scooped you up in his arms. I mean that he's carrying you in his grace. I mean that what the law was powerless to do and it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his son in the likeness of a sinful man. Um, Stephen Furtick. Unqualified. <laughs> Qualified. <laughs> oh, no, he did not. He did not. He did not. <sighs> and it was such a final kind of pronouncement, like a, a gavel in the Texas death penalty case. <sighs> Unqualified. And I heard that, and what surprised me the most was, it didn't make me mad. I kind of laughed. For a moment, I thought of some words that I could call him back. Of course, I'm not going to name the guy, but there are some clues in the book if you actually want to read it. But what surprised me was that I kind of agreed, and I was fine with it. And after I thought through my emotions for a few minutes, it was like I thought, yeah, that has a nice ring to it. Un Hey, who is this? Who is this lady right here? Why are you so close and staring at him like that? <laughs> so weird, man. Qualified. Oh, God. Unqualified. <laughs> what is God doing in your life right now that is actually an indication that his presence is becoming stronger? and realer, but your emotional sensation is that he has left you. Now, the power of his absence is really a matter of us understanding that God is not limited by physical dimensions. And I know you know that, but he never really leaves. Okay. However, he does change forms. Why y'all sitting down? I didn't give you that permission yet. If you were standing, you can remain standing in reverence and respect for the word of Almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth. You've been so energetic all night, and I'd ask you to keep that energy as kind of a really cool thing when you get to preach at Lakewood after Israel Houghton. And so please don't ruin it for me by like losing your energy. It would be great if we could make this everything I had dreamed it would be. Hey, no, really, you may be seated. And thank you, worship team. Thank you so much. And uh, I did want to take a moment and just honor uh, Pastor Joel and Victoria again to say thank you for letting me stand here and preach. Yeah, I didn't tell you this, but I, I actually came out here like one year into our church, maybe a year and a half into our church. And I guess it was 
like a round table thing that they've set up for pastors. I got to sneak up here and make a little video for our church and it's just getting started and I made a video of this place and talked to our church and said, if God can do it there, what could he do in our city? And I wanted to just report to you, you know, I remember our church cheering for that, but it was kind of hard to imagine. And since that time, we've seen like over 20,000 people come to Christ in the church. But I want to thank you for inspiring that vision for us. And um, it's pretty cool what you help us imagine. So thanks. You kind of blow all of our minds. And then... Stephen Furtick, looking more and more like a word faith preacher all the time. Here's a little nugget called Tapping the Full Potential of Your Power from his series Grapes and Giants. That's right, Grapes and Giants. You've been chosen for a great journey, but it will not be easy. Ah, so I'm going on a journey. I can bring my four-wheeler. I see how this is all working. You will face many challenges along the way. You will come up against giants. I wonder if David was involved in this little snippet. But you must remember the promises. You will taste the fruit of the land and all its riches. Huh? That's a promise to Israel. Are we Israel? Answer, no. You will overcome, you will experience blessings and battles. You will be victorious. You will overcome. Anybody wondering about the trajectory of Stephen Furtick? Anybody wondering where he's going these days? And we got a bishop who's a blacksmith. And we want to get behind him today and say, go ahead, Bishop, do what you have in your mind. We are with you. Part. Now, this man's, this man, he, he hangs out with, he works with Joyce Meyer. Is it Myers or Myers something, right? He works with Joel Osteen and his wife, and he works with this man. He works with Michael Todd. I mean, it's like the same people, the same people all together. What do you really expect? What do we expect from this? What, what are we? What are we hoping to to get from this? I don't know, man. And so this next generation wants to know we're with you, hard. And so, thank you for your faith, Bishop. Thank you for every slippery place. Thank you for every thorny place you navigated. You made it look easy. We know it wasn't easy, but you made it look that way. So forgive us. We don't appreciate you like we all don't appreciate you. But we want you to know we're with you. An iTeam exclusive, a mega house from mega church pastor. NBC Charlotte's iTeam has confirmed that Elevation Church pastor Stephen Furtick is building a 16,000 square foot home in Weddington. It has seven and a half bathrooms. Building permits put the contract value of the house alone just shy of $1.4 million. The land cost another $325,000 for a total cost of more than $1.7 million. Yet Elevation Church has asked volunteers and employees alike to sign this confidentiality agreement. The agreement threatens to sue volunteers and members if they disclose church finances. First city in the promised land that God's people had to take before they could have everything that God wanted to give them as an inheritance. It was the first. Everybody say first. Often the first battle is the hardest. How many of you know that getting started is the hardest part sometimes? Just like getting to the gym. If you can lace up your shoes, you can make it through the workout. But sometimes getting started is the hardest part. And yet, I was studying about Jericho, and you sing the song, and it's like, he fought the battle and the walls came tumbling down. But what it doesn't tell you is that he he spent 45 years in the wilderness wandering because the generation before didn't have enough faith to go in. He had waited 45 years to even get the opportunity to go into Jericho. So Joshua was watching us with our, you know, our hand motions. Joshua put the battle of Jericho. And he's like, wait a minute, no hand motions. No, this is this is not as simple as you make it sound. Because because sometimes when we see somebody else's victory, yo, that music is driving me crazy, man. That music is something. Why would you want to use this music? So annoying. Man, I cannot finish this video, dude. Yeah, no, I'm not going to finish this. <laughs> hey, what do you guys think about this? 
you know, it, there's nothing new here, man. There's nothing new. It's just what we we already know about this man. You get what I mean? We already know this about this man. So it's, there's really nothing new. It's just kind of proving, okay? It's kind of confirming. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of confirming what we already confirmed. Yes, sir. Hey, man. You only you only need to take these guns and and water and ice to the church, man. You got all you gotta do is take your Bible, man. For as a preacher, all you need is this. You don't need nothing. You don't need extra stuff to explain, okay? To illustrate. That's how he puts it. You don't need nothing else, man. People really want to let this in their heart. They will. You don't nothing else, okay? They invite Jesus in. They will understand the words that are in here. You know what I'm saying? If they really want to, they will. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, let me add all that. You, if you accept that, then you will understand it. You don't need anything else. Jesus Christ is Lord. What do you guys think about this, man? Comment below. I'll catch you guys next time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> The kingdom of God and everything else be added to you. But say, you first, the kingdom of God and everything else be added to you. Say, you first, the kingdom of God and everything else be added to you. But say, you first, the kingdom of God and everything else be added to you. I am the way, the truth.